Welcome. My name is Father Jim Keenan. I'm the Vice Provost for Global Engagement here at Boston College, and I'm delighted uh, again to introduce speakers for our Global Scholars Lecture Series. This afternoon, we're really delighted. This is a conversation that we had several months ago, and we've been talking about this, so we've been really looking forward to our two speakers, to uh, Stella Arreti and Luca Bertocchi. Um, and I'd like to introduce them and say something about their studies here um, with Dorothy Jones, who's here. We're very happy that Dottie is here with us as well. And we welcome everybody who's online with us. Um, Dr. Chinma Stella Araretti is a medical surgical nurse with a special focus on nursing process, electronic health records, and standardized nursing languages. She is a senior academic staff at the Department of Nursing Science at Obafemi Awolowo University uh, in Ile Ife, Nigeria. She teaches medical surgical nursing, fundamentals of nursing at undergraduate and advanced nursing process at graduate levels. She also teaches nursing process and standardized nursing languages at continuing education programs organized by the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria for Nurses in Nigeria. She completed her PhD in 2018 at the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, uh, Nigeria. Her research focus is on improving nursing documentation and care using standardized nursing languages. Luca Bertocchi is a, uh, an Italian nurse and doctoral candidate in clinical medicine and public health at L'Aquila University. His doctoral project, for which he received a grant from NANDA Foundation, is focused on the impact of using standardized nursing terminologies and SNTs on patients and organizational outcomes. Furthermore, he is working on enhancing nursing teaching information, informatics tools for improving uh, nursing assessment, clinical reasoning, and decision making by nursing students. His focus in the Gordon program is to enhance nursing knowledge using standardized nursing language and nursing process through the development of international standardized tools in collaboration with nurse researchers from different countries able to be able to, able to use in clinical uh, practice, education, and research level with the goal to improve the quality of nursing assessment and patient outcomes. His research fields are in standardized nursing language, simulation, oncology, and nutrition. Both Stella and Luca are currently international scholars with the Gordon Program for Clinical Reasoning and Knowledge Development at the Canal School of Nursing here at BC, working with Professor Dorothy Jones and other nursing research experts on standardized nursing languages and nursing knowledge development. The title of their talk is Nursing's Impact on Health and Well-Becoming, Global Perspectives. Stella and Luca, it's all yours. Welcome. Thank you very much, Father Jim Keane, for that um, beautiful introduction. You almost swept me off my feet before I started. <laughs> this evening, and welcome once again, everyone. Father has welcomed us. I want to welcome us again, and um, thank you for coming to deliberate with us. We're going to be deliberating, be, be discussing. Um, this evening, myself and my colleague Luca will be discussing some of um, our thoughts, the thoughts that um, emanated from our discussions as Gordon Scholars over the period of time that we have been in BC at um, Boston College. Um, we're going to be discussing some of these thoughts in relation to um, what nurses do, how nurse, what nurses have done in the past, what nurses are doing, and what nurses are expected to do in relation to achieving the global health um, for all. Soldiers 
sanitary practices still in use today. When the scourge of polio hit the world, it was standard practice to strap down and immobilize patients. Until a nurse discovered that movement and physical therapy had far better results. In the 1950s, jaundice was a leading cause of infant death. Until a nurse found that a few hours of sunlight could actually cure the condition. At the dawn of the AIDS epidemic, no one knew how the disease spread. So patients were kept quarantined and alone. Until nurses defied convention and embraced them with compassion. During the Ebola outbreak, the disease was thought by many to be too contagious to treat. Until a student nurse used what she had on hand garbage bags and duct tape to protect herself so she could care for others. And cerebral palsy robbed many patients of their ability to speak until a nurse gave them back their voices. And I will always be grateful to her. This tribute video brings to mind the, the stories of nurses who have contributed and changed the concept of global health through their um, contributions, through their outstanding contributions in critical times in global health. And now, what do we have? The COVID. All these have gone, and now we have the COVID. The COVID pandemic, in no doubt, has brought so many, so much sadness and challenges, uncertainties to the global community. The photo in this slide shows um, military trucks carrying dead bodies of persons who died as a result of the COVID-19 um, virus, the COVID-19 infection. This is a photo that is taken in Italy. And you can agree with me that it's a very saddening situation. The COVID-19 did not just affect po the, pop the general population. It also affected nurses immensely. The emergence of this COVID-19 pandemic has brought so much um, burnout, both physiological as well as psychological, emotional burdens on nurses globally. Many nurses have lost their lives. Many have lost family members. Many were separated from their families for a long period of time because of the fear of um, infecting their families. So they had to live in hotels for hospitals who could afford it. And maybe in, in some slept in hospitals, in call rooms for days. You can agree with me that this is very, it could really be very traumatic, this period. But really very traumatic for people. While many of us could sit in, our, in the comfort of our homes, protecting ourselves and working from home, Many nurses may not be able to do that because they have to be there physically to take care of their patients. And as this continued, this had put so much burden on nurses that even the, the, the statistics, a recent report has shown that the risk of suicide among nurses increased during this pandemic. We have seen that from the video that we have watched that in, at very critical points at the, in the history of global health, nurses have played very important roles. At this point, nurses usually have been seen to be temporarily 
provide consciousness to those who are unconscious. They have been the eyes of those who have newly become blind, and they have been voices to those who are unable to speak, just like we have watched, we have seen in that video. And nurses change lives, just like we have seen there. And that changes everything. Nurses have been all over the world, irrespective of where they are, they have been protective shields, like a protective shield around for the millions of people that they provide um, health care for. The, the World Health Organization um, didn't, you know, didn't know there was a pandemic coming. And then when, when um, the, the, it was the, the year 2020 was designated as the year of nurses and midwives. The WHO designated that year to, to commemorate the, the bicentennial, that, that was the bicentennial of Florence Nightingale, who is known as the lady with the lamp. Like we've seen in that video, um, as a result of her contribution to um, reducing mortality among the um, soldiers in 1854 during the Crimean War. However, other nurses have also succeeded and continued to provide, to contribute um, their quotas and making differences in global health. So the World Health Organization designated um, year 2020 in, in a bid to recognize those challenging situations that nurses must always must manage and work with and also to highlight the importance of nursing and nurses to the society. Because nurses are very critical to the society. That year was not just to highlight the challenges, but it was also to celebrate nurses and their contributions they make to global health. Unfortunately, no one knew that that year, and even years after, we are two, two years um, two years after the pandemic started, and we are still here. Like we have known, nurses are usually, um, they are usually in the forefront of global health, just like we have seen in the video, and we have experienced even during the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. We provide individualized care while educating, innovating, and advocating for patients' health and the health of the population wherever we work, whether in my community in um, Ileife, Nigeria, or in the US or anywhere, whether in our country or as uh, an international body. So nurses are very, very critical. They are very, very critical aspects uh, of the healthcare. With about 29 million nurses around the globe, serving an approximate 7.9 billion people in the world. This means that if the number of nurses were to be evenly distributed, equally distributed, one nurse will be taking care of at least 270 persons at once. Unfortunately, also, though this is bad enough, it is, we are not even there yet because of several inequalities. Among the, 200 and, uh, the 29 million nurses around the globe, about 3.9 million of these nurses are in the US, are in the United States. And um, nurses continue to face the challenge of shortage, uh, shortages and um, that result in burnout. Many have to work um, mandatory overtimes over time in their workplaces. Despite all these challenges, when the COVID-19 came, it brought out many of the challenges that like, have been under the carpet for nurses. The, the COVID-19 was not the originator of these challenges that we have, but it just made them more visible. Because at this point, because of the, the death, a lot of people, a lot of turnover, many nurses were withdrawing from their services. Many could not, and many died, and so people were afraid, and people are still living right now. And um, so the, the COVID-19 pandemic just brought it, make it become more visible. But despite all these challenges, everywhere, 
and especially in the United States, and even in my country recently, nurses have been um, recognized as the most trusted profession in the health sector. We, as Gordon scholars, we think that we, we, we come to reason that if we think um, globally, if we work together as nurses, we are able, we are better positioned to identify and um, reduce those inequalities in the social determinants of health that can impede the achievement of the sustainable development goals, especially the goal number three, which focuses on um, health and well-being. Now, health and well-becoming, as we'll be talking about uh, it later. Now, irrespective of our geographical boundaries, our colors, races, or religion, nursing is a global profession with global identity. And we are brought together um, physically by the International Council of Nurses. The International Council of Nurses is the highest professional organization of nurses that, infl that influences um, nursing policies and education and practice all over the world. And this is made up of um, different member countries who, rep who are represented by their national body, by, by their national professional body, such as um, we have the National, uh, national Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives, and then here we have the American Nurses Association. So all, uh, and then the ones in Italy, Brazil, um, where my colleagues are from. All these people come together in, under the umbrella of um, the International C Council of Nurses. Yes, the ICM brings us together, but the, there's a very important characteristics that brings nurses together. And that is the transformational presence that nurses bring to healthcare. The transformational presence that nurses bring to healthcare brings nurses together wherever they work. That uniqueness, that presence, being there with the patient is what makes nursing unique. They are with the patient 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Nurses communicate this nurse-patient um, relationship through standardized nursing languages and um, through standardized nursing languages, and the, this standardized nursing languages, um, it's a common language that nurses use to describe the phenomenon of care among nurses and between nurses and other healthcare professionals. The American Nurses Association, I must acknowledge that they have been providing lead on this. The American Nurses Association recognizes 12 standardized nursing languages of which the NANDA International Nursing, uh, NANDA International Nursing Diagnosis, sorry, the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association International is the most used of these languages. The North American Nursing Diagnosis International is an international organization that develops and refines nursing diagnosis. And nursing diagnosis is, a, is a, a clinical judgment that the nurse makes based on the story of the patient and through the clinical assessment, um, a, a comprehensive assessment that the, the nurse um, uh, performs. This nursing, the nursing diagnosis is usually different from, makes um, nursing different from medical diagnosis. It's, different from medical diagnosis. Because the medical diagnosis focuses on the disease of the patient, while the nurse, while nursing diagnosis focuses on the holistic person, the individual's responses to those situations, to life processes, to, to his or her experiences, and how these experiences influences the individual's responses, uh, responses to care and health behaviors. However, for us to be able to do this, we must be able to 
um, gather information. And for nurses to be able to contribute effectively to the SDGs, we must be able to identify patterns in those um, social determinants of health. We must be able to identify patterns within individuals, communities, and groups, and even countries that influences their social determinants of health that also have um, impact on the achievement of their health and well-becoming. So assessment becomes very, very critical in the achievement of um, uh, the, social, the sustainable development goals. Over the years, nurses have used the 11 functional, the Gordon's 11 functional health pattern developed by Marjorie Gordon. I, I, I'm not, I, I think that some of us are familiar with Marjorie Gordon, especially those of us in the schools of nursing. We are, must be familiar with uh, Marjorie Gordon. Every nurse, almost every nurse knows Marjorie Gordon because of the 11 functional health patterns. This pattern, we use it in Nigeria and it's used in many places. This framework is used in Nigeria in many places to assess patients when they come to the hospital. But this has been in very unstandardized um, format. So anybody, everybody just writes whatever they want to write. And um, um, reports have shown that there have been challenges facing the, the use of the nursing assessment because of unstructured patterns that we have been using. So in recent times, the functional health pattern screening assessment tool was developed to, as a standardized tool to screen patient health patterns that nurses can um, intervene. So we, as um, Gordon Scholars in the Majority Gordon Program, are working together to, uh, on some projects to be able to, to, um, to validate. Th this tool has been developed here, and we are working together as um, international nurses to be able to validate this tool and test it and also use it to measure the health patterns of, of the populations in our different countries. This is one of the projects that we're doing. We're also um, working on identifying the commonalities in the nursing diagnosis. That's another project that we're doing um, uh, as, uh, as a group to understand, uh, to compare the commonalities, uh, to identify the commonalities in the nursing problems that individuals um, have when they come to our clinics, irrespective of where they are. There are five of us in this um, program. And myself and Luca are here physically present, while our other colleagues, Rita, Swelling, and Anna, are also joining us on Zoom. And um, I hope they will be able to um, also answer some of the questions that you may have. So the, the Major Regarding Program for Clinical Reasoning and um, Knowledge Development is a partnership between Nanda International and Boston College with the aim of advancing, educating, and disseminating nursing knowledge internationally, as well as foster a deep understanding of the articulation of nurses' contribution to patients' health outcomes with <coughs> true um, clinical reasonings and refinement of nursing language, especially the nursing diagnosis. The NADA International holds biannual conferences um, where nurses all over the world come together to deliberate on standardized nursing languages, uh, um, knowledge, and knowledge development. Fortunately, the next um, biannual co conference will be held here in BC in 2023, sometime in June 2023. And um, incidentally, it's also the 50th um, anniversary of Nanda International. And I'm using this opportunity to also invite each and every one of you to please attend that conference. And um, nothing, the Major Guardian Program for clinical effectiveness and knowledge development, build leaders. And we are proud, and we are also 
especially thankful to the leadership of Nanda International and Boston College for making this partnership workable and for giving us this opportunity to present our thoughts this evening. Thank you very much, everyone. Irrespective of where we work or live, I want to agree, I, 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 I bet that you agree with me that we are all humans and all humans are the same, right? Right? Yes, we are all humans, and all humans are the same. And the goal of nursing is to provide health and well-becoming. The goal of nursing is to help individuals understand, become aware of themselves, become aware of their potentials and their limitations that could influence their health and well-becoming. Over the years, the World Health Organization has defined health um, as um, a state of complete physical, uh, physical, psychological, social, and spiritual well-being. And the health illness continuum places individual on a state where the person is either well or sick. You are either well or sick. So uh, I wonder when somebody could be at all time physically fit or well. This is more or less a static state. But over time, there have been a, 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 a change, all right? From where, where health is not seen, where wellness is not seen as a static, um, as static but I, as a dynamic process. Uh, where health is seen of consisting of both illness and wellness. The individual is not divided, but a whole. So wellness is seen as a manifestation of the redeeming fluctuation of life process within that whole person. And within this whole person, there are times where, the person, where there is order and disorder. The person goes down, sometimes you are up here, sometimes you are low, sometimes you are up there, sometimes you are low. And that does not mean, uh, by this um, dynamic definition, that you are not healthy. So health is seen as a, 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 a completeness of a whole and a dynamic process. And um, the role of nursing is to help individuals understand this themselves and become aware of who they are become aware of what the disease, the disease means to them. When, they un when those individuals understand what disease means to them, they are able to process it and process what these experiences, um, the impact these experiences or the patterns of the experiences could have on their health choices and on their health behaviors. My colleague Luca is going to talk about some of the um, dichotomous changes, the changes that have been made over time in the definitions, in, in the perspective by which nurses are beginning to look at health. So I hand over to Luca to continue with the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you to Stella. Can you hear me? OK. Um, so as Stella said, there is a big difference between what does it mean uh, well-being and what does it mean well-becoming. So uh, about this, we are talking about from several months I, I are here in, in Boston. I thank you a lot to all the organization and Boston College at the Gondos program, Professor Dorothy Jones, for this great opportunity. Uh, so health during the decades be, uh, evolved. And uh, at the beginning, there was a dichotomy between, between what does it mean health and what does it mean disease. After we, we went to a process until to a continuum, so from uh, wellness to disease, but there was still a difference, a boundary between these two concepts. So the step after was the nursing science of unitary human being of uh, Rogers. So in this step, health and disease are not two different things, but are integrated in one same thing. And the, the, this theory was still refined from, uh, uh, from Newman with a theory of health as expanding consciousness. So in this, uh, in this theory, uh, it's like a coin. 
So health and disease are, this, are the same coin, just different parts of the same coin. It's like failure and success. It's, uh, you cannot understand one part without understanding the other. For this reason, it's so important uh, this uh, paradigmatic change. Sometimes the organization don't understand that they just focus on the fixed approach without uh, understanding the holistic approach that should be used. Because as you can see, health is a transforming process. So you need to, to go to a higher level of consciousness. This is why. Because um, disease is not uh, just a bad thing. It's something that happens to everyone. And uh, when uh, you do have a disease, this could, could mean an opportunity to achieve a higher level of consciousness. So if you can achieve this higher level, nurses can help you to achieve this higher level because they can uh, give you a direction. And the, the persons can make uh, a decision, can take actions, and can have this transformational process that, that is, will, will uh, become health and well-becoming. But let's, take, uh, an, uh, let's make an example, because otherwise it's very theoretical. I will not get. These two people, both Italians, are two perfect examples of this uh, meaning of well-becoming, because both had this type of, um, of um, failure, and then they rise until to a higher level of consciousness. So Michael Roccati, this man was, uh, had a serious, very critical uh, accident uh, with a motorbike. Five years, was paralyzed completely. He was not mo able to move himself. He was paralyzed in the bed. After five years, uh, you, you can see in the, in the slide upper, there is a lead. So using a new technique, innovative technique, they insert this lead in, the, in this spine. After five years that he was not able to move, he was able to, to walk. So now he, he can walk, I mean, with all this uh, equipment, but he can, he can walk. So he said, I'm, I, I can feel free. So it's not just a fixed approach, because it's also the mindset that makes a difference. This other example is Goju Sophia. If you, are, if you like, like uh, skiing, you perhaps you will know her already, if you follow the Olympics. But she, three weeks before the Olympics, the last Olympics, so she had the bad fall. So she, she in Cortina, so in Italy, she had this race, and she uh, had the injury to the, to the knee. Um, this is one of the worst uh, injuries can happen to an athlete. I know because they have the same injury in both legs, so I know how long it takes. <laughs> it's very, very serious. After three days, she, as a surgery, three days. After she, she gets the, 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 the flight, everyone was like, she will, she will not do it, you know. She, get, she got the silver. She got the, she took the, the um, before the race, she, was, she got the painkillers. So she say, she, she, she was inspired from a sort of light. So these are, this is the light of consciousness. So this means that um, these are good examples that uh, a person with a illness, with a disease, is not uh, something different from, from health. This means that uh, the, the disease can be an opportunity to grow to a higher level of consciousness. And the nurse can make a difference of this. And uh, this means that the nurse can help the person to become more aware about the meaning, the meaning of what does it mean uh, health. And, uh, if there is this new meaning, there is a new identity about the person because the identity is a more deeper thing perhaps that can have, that can be in a person. And there is a new vision about uh, your, your goal and what you, what you want to achieve as a person. So this is not just for, for it's, it is for everyone. So it's all your life, do you, do you have this meaning, this identity and this vision? These concepts are truly very important. As a nurse can help uh, people to achieve this, uh, this cause. If we move from the personal point of view, from the micro to the macro, so from the person to the profession, so to nurses as profession, we have also a meaning as profession, an identity as profession, and a vision as profession. And this uh, was particularly true, and it's particularly true when there is challenges. So as Celeb said, and we saw in the video, 
during, during the years, uh, also during the COVID pandemic, we are several challenges. And uh, for this reason, it's, so, it's very important to be clear about which are your meaning, which is your vision, and uh, which is your, your goals. Otherwise, you will get lost. So, Stephen Marble, a lack of clarity could put the brakes of any journey to success. So, to have this clarity about these uh, this, this things is so critical for everyone, and so also for the professional nurses. And uh, as you can see from these pictures, it's uh, from the famous painter uh, Bansky, this child is, is playing with this new superhero, the, the, the nurse. This was during the, the COVID pandemic. So what you can see, the bean, as there is the, the whole, the, the Batman, there is Spider-Man in the bean. So the child is a society. So the, the, the society decided to bring the light one of the other profession. That one, in the first wave of the COVID pandemic, it was the moment of the, of the nurse. After, they will forget about you and they will put in the bean. So for this reason, nurses need a clear identity. Otherwise, the society will, will forget about the profession. And uh, without a clear vision, a clear identity, there is no value or purpose other than the medical discipline, just to support as a discipline. But we are, as we saw, we are something different. We just not have a fixed approach, but we have a wider approach that uh, comprises a lot of more different things. And uh, our approach, this holistic approach, can be very helpful to achieve uh, also the sustainable development goals. Uh, as says, uh, these are the 17 goals um, from the, in different dimensions. Um, in particular, we will focus in this presentation is a number three. It's about good health and uh, well-being. So all this, uh, all this, um, these goals can be achieved if we have a leadership. So if you have a clarity on of, uh, of the vision and the nursing leaders that can promote this, uh, these goals in a collaboration, so as in a partnership, as a goal 17. So we had a partnership of the goals. Um, as you saw before, we are a group of different um, scholars from different countries. So Spain, Brazil, United States, Nigeria, and me from Italy. And uh, we, during this, uh, this, this, the last uh, years, but also before, we was facing a lot of difficulties, challenges. Um, so we, in this uh, slide, we just uh, highlighted the problems, the challenges that we, was, uh, we, we, we saw in our, in our country. Uh, but there are some differences, but there are also some commonalities. So some problems are recurrent in uh, each country. So can be um, solved perhaps together in a better way. The first one in all, all, in all the country is the nursing shortage. So this is not just our opinion, but also from the international data. You can see there is a lack of nurses around the world. And uh, there is a lack of, of nurses. Also, there is also in, uh, some inequalities. So you, as you can see in, South, in Africa, in Spain, Italy, there is lower levels in comparison to uh, no. Um, United States and Norway, Norway 18.1. 18 so there are a lot of nurses more compared to other countries. So this needs to be highlighted that uh, it's very important because what does it mean if we don't have nurses? This is the result. So this, uh, this study from Aiken, she's a very famous researcher for her study about this, this particular subject. She found that uh, a, re a reduction a reduction of the number of nurses is associated with a higher number of deaths. So you can see from this one, each 10 percentage point reduction in proportion of professional nurses associated with one 11 percent increase in the odds of death. So you remove nurses, you increase the odds. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's very threatening to the safety of people. For this reason, we need to, to address the challenges and the problems that we have. Why we have this different these inequalities between different countries. Why we, have, we don't have uh, uh, nurses? So there is inadequacy of health finances, different uh, policies, uh, system, healthcare systems that are different. So 
um, private or public, different preparation of nurses, um, different population of countries. So we have a lot of differences. But in particular, as a last point, lack of communication, the impact of nurses' contribution to patient. This is critical because if we don't measure what we are doing, we are not visible. And if we are not visible, we, not, we, not, we cannot have a voice. And we cannot have a voice, we cannot uh, be present to the mm, table for the decision. So this is very critical. In particular, if we need uh, leaders, that creates more leaders. So we, are, we need leaders to, to the table of decision. Because nurses is not just nurses, it's also it's health, but it's also peace. And we know in these days how much is important the peace. Nurses is, is about uh, these concepts. And Nazi leaderships uh, have an impact because you can, uh, you can really influence the organizational outcomes, patient outcomes, you can create a better environment, and uh, you can change the policy. And uh, if you are a leader in this profession, of course, you can create a new clarity about uh, professional identity in order to achieve, of course, the SDG3. So achieve uh, well becoming uh, internationally and globally. Um, so the Gordon's program that I am part, so fortunately, <laughs> it's uh, addressed this, this, uh, these aspects and uh, it's about uh, leadership, it's about uh, knowledge development. It's a great uh, opportunity to connect uh, people around the world in different areas. So practice, research, education, all together uh, as, a, as a team. So from Africa, from Brazil, from the United States, from Spain. So we are increasing the number of people from different countries to solve problems globally and to make better the people for pe helpful people. So it's very noble values, there is a vision, and we can create new, new leadership uh, around the world. Um, so this is what we are doing as a group. And, uh, and uh, this, this is uh, not just us, it's a call to action, because from different papers, these are just four papers about uh, uh, these uh, sustainable development goals, um, people are, and the policy, are, policy makers are asking nurses to, to become more aware about this, uh, this issue and to be present to the table decision maker. Uh, tables, so um, it's uh, it's really critical to address these points. This is just an example of what we are doing as a group in this collaboration. Uh, so the functional health pattern assessment screening tool, uh, before St Stella she said, say something about it, is a, a screening tool in the assessment. So uh, as I said before, in, about the two example, the two people that they failed. Very important concept is a pattern, which is a pattern of, of health that is compromised. It's like, uh, it's something different from medical point of view. You don't address the problems from just uh, the body, but you address the person, you ask, you, you can tell to the person which could be the problem, but you need to evaluate, assess before. For this reason, this is a self-assessment, so the people, the person can actually um, do it and understand, you can understand which, the, which is the problem of, of the pattern that is uh, uh, addressed. And uh, um, we are doing this project in these uh, four different countries. So it was developed in, uh, in America, but in Brazil, it's already validated, translated the instrument. Uh, Nigeria and Italy, we are developing the, the instrument too to be used in the practice, research, and education. And it's the only um, instrument uses the Gordon's program because it's based on Gordon's, uh, Gordon's uh, uh, framework that is uh, with a psychometrical um, analysis. It's validated, it's a, it's a good, valid, available tool. So this is just uh, an example. As concluding thoughts, um, so the things that I think uh, it's important to, uh, to remember from this uh, talk, it's uh, about this uh, concept of transformation, what, does, what really means health, and uh, how nurses can really change the things uh, and can uh, be a solution to the problems to a global point of view. So um, thank you very much for, for all the organization for this uh, event.
So I'm very glad to be here. Um, so thank you very much. And if you have any questions, this are uh, our contact details. And this our uh, references. Thank you. So we have some time for questions, uh, comments, for observations. Uh, Dr. Would you want to say anything at all? This is Dr. Dorothy Jones. So, uh, um, I would like to say that and um, we've we've been talking about this for a while. So yes. <laughs> Um, I just think that uh, this is an opportunity. The program has been an opportunity to bring two people together. And I think the book is closing comment about the fact that nurses can be a part of a global solution is important. And Blessing College and focusing on the work that goes on here uh, is to bring people together from different disciplines to provide uh, a network of dialogue, really. And uh, I think what this group is trying to look at is working together about and looking at focusing on nursing across countries, but then also working with other disciplines to solve problems, which we have many of uh, globally, and to attempt to provide uh, a dimensional perspective and to articulate that perspective in a way that may not be visible to other people uh, by the work that they do. And uh, these two uh, scholars have been an extraordinary contribution um, to this work in advancing the global um, orientation. But the other three scholars are incredible as well. Uh, one lady from Brazil uh, has done incredible work down there and is now working um, in the United States with her husband. And the other two um, are also moving work in this area and really trying to transform healthcare in areas that have been underserved, uh, where there's a lack of equity, where the resources are compromised. And when you think about a lot of the work that we're doing here around environment, around looking at water and supply, looking at nutrition, uh, looking at promoting activity, healthy families, healthy babies, healthy children, um, the perspective of nursing makes a dramatic difference. So I am uh, thrilled to be part of the program and to uh, engage in dialogue with these incredible scholars. So thank you. So, comments or questions? Also from online, from virtual communication. Yes? yes. This is more of a, a comment than a question, I guess, but um, I just really appreciate that you uh, really highlighted uh, the Sustainable Development Goal 17 around partnership um, and not just the, the health and well being of people. Um, and I think maybe one of the highlights of this program is the, the kind of intimacy and smallness of the group. So I know you mentioned, Stella, the, the ICN, and so I'm actually part of a bigger group of ICN, so I was on a call with them this morning, and one thing we were saying is that among this group of like 40 of us, what we really like about the program is when we go to breakout groups of just three or maybe four people, um, and really talking kind of, it's all nurses, but kind of inter-country, um, what kind of that dialogue looks like, much more just between the three or four of us than in the whole group of 40, um, and really understanding the similarities. So I was in a small group with myself, a woman from Jordan and a woman from Norway, and very, very different countries that we're all from and work in, um, with very diverse kind of workforces in nursing and population and health issues. Um, but kind of talking about things together, there were so many more similarities and differences that we really came from. And so uh, it's just nice to kind of hear between the five of you callers kind of that what you've kind of come to see that as well. In the Thank you, Brittany, for the, for the observation. I think I totally agree. I, I think partnership uh, and collaboration between different uh, nurses from different countries is uh, critical because, uh, as you say, there is a, a lot of different that we are in common. We thought, oh, we are from different countries. So no, I think this, the, com the problems are still the same. Perhaps there are differences, but there are more commonalities, as you say. And if we face them together, 
we can find a solution perhaps. And uh, more, more brains are better than one, so <laughs> totally agree. And um, it's also such an experience to met, meet new people from different cultures. So it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to, to be in this group and, and see that also you, for example, for example you are doing this similar projects in, uh, in this area because I saw your presentation and <laughs> about the global challenges. So congratulations also to you for your, for your work. Yeah. Uh, thank you for a really wonderful presentation. You nicely outlined how nurses are essential, how they are critical for outcomes for healthcare. And I think nursing is different than many professions because it's really a calling. People are called to nursing because they are drawn to work in the service of others and embrace a very holistic view of the entire person, not as a disease in and of itself. And I, I saw the slide that you put up showing the differences, different challenges in different countries. Relatively limited resource countries, very affluent countries, and there are some similarities and themes. And I'm interested to hear how do you think your work collaborating together internationally to measure what nurses do and contribute, how do you think that might kind of enhance people's evaluation or how they value nursing and maybe help prevent some of that burnout because there's an acknowledgement of that contribution? Thank you, Andrew, for the nice uh, question. It's very, very inter interesting question. I think uh, the main goal is just this to measure the contribution and to see how can be affordable. Because of course, it's not just measure because uh, the, the main problem is that people are in burnout. Uh, also from several studies about uh, um, the user friendliness of, of, the, of the instrument, informatical instrument, um, nurses are facing a lot of difficulties because uh, um, all this, uh, this uh, documentation system, it's uh, a workload for them. And uh, of course, you are you have to face with all this, uh, these different aspects, so psychological aspects, the bureaucratic aspect, you need also to document care, quality of care, because as you see, it's so crucial, because so you can see, okay, this is our contribution to, to what we are doing to patients in terms of quality of life, uh, anxiety, uh, mortality, and readmission, and so on. Um, so I think uh, it's, it's really critical to address this problem because it needs to be easy. It needs to be something that needs to be easy to be consistent use from, from nurses uh, da daily, 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 and uh, in a standardized manner in, around the globe. So we can have like uh, this big data, we can compare data, share data with, in different countries, and we can see, okay, we have this, 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 also because we need to go back to Florence Nightingale. She was the first one that she highlighted that uh, in, in, uh, in the war of Crimea, now in Russia, we are also war now. She highlighted there a reduction using the, with the nursing care of the 40%, but she, because she was measuring it. So if we don't measure, we are invisible. So we need to measure, but we, need, we have a, a lot of tools now. Perhaps this is also too much tools. We need to decide which tools, which measure to, to have, and then give a global perspective to all of this in collaboration, and to, to show to the world what we can do together. This is my, my thought. Thank you for the very interesting questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I was thinking, as Garden Scholars, one of the things we are learning as individuals and as a group is collaboration. And that is very important for us to be able to collaborate internationally to discuss the problems that are um, facing nursing so that um, with this collaboration and the results of the work we are doing together, we can go back while um, improving our own individual skills. We, we go back to our communities to give back to them, at making our own contributions to solving the present problem in nursing. So collaboration, I think, is the key word here. Yeah. And, and documentation. And documentation. So, yeah. Yeah. Documentation, yeah. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you, Luca and Stella. Wonderful presentation. Uh, my query also is something with regard to challenges. Uh, as uh, we 
said, countries like developing countries, I am coming from India, uh, more or less same problem, nursing shortage and poor image uh, of nursing. Uh, based on the collaboration and your research, uh, what are your proposals? One thing with regard to the diversity problem in nursing, uh, if you take who are the nurses? Generally, the aspiration is to become a doctor. So, nursing is considered as you rightly put it, uh, it's only secondary, it's inverted comma. And uh, do you have any strong proposals? Now, I remember I was attending a seminar here in Boston College. A uh, doctor from Massachusetts uh, uh, Institute, yeah. uh, somebody spoke. Yeah. Uh, and even there, he, she was talking about. Uh, the, uh, the disparity even in the COVID uh, vaccination uh, there's a disparity the social, different social groups no? and how do you tackle all these issues do you have uh, any proposal yeah, um, yeah as garden scholars presently we may not have all the answers to um, the solution of the solution to the problem but one thing that looking at the problem nursing shortage we we'll look at what are the what's what are the causes the root causes of nursing shortage many nurses what are those problems problem that nurses have changed look for motivation for remuneration in my country a lot of nurses are moving out to greener past to seek for greener pastures and the population remains who cares for them but you can't blame them the government will not pay your bills. You have to pay your bills and take care of your family, right? So they move to greener pastures. The government, um, nursing education is not so much supported. People have to pay through, like maybe other um, professions too. They have to pay through. Nursing research is not being so much supported. So um, if we look at this, the problem will not just be... Um, Look at nursing shortage, recruitment nurses. You recruit more nurses, you don't improve the environment, people get weary, there's burnout, there's high turnover, they leave. And then the problem continues. So um, I think I, we as scholars, in the process of this deliberation, we've been looking at the root of the problem. Get it? support nursing education, provide appropriate or conducive and working environment for nurses, employ more nurses, support nursing research, support, make good policies that would help nurses to, to stay in practice and to function maximally where they, where they are. Pay them well. Pay them well. If I was reading, reading a study yesterday that um, reported that it's not just about increasing the, the salaries that keeps the nurses, but satisfaction. We talked about identity. Identity, clarity, and vision. That is very important. And that comes to making policies that um, support them in performing those roles, doing that, those things that they are called to do as nurses and not just um, um, help to other kind of professions. I, I don't know. Wouldn't you yeah. say too though that your discussion about uh, humans and health and uh, looking at well-becoming and awareness um, is applicable to anybody so that it's a bridge to kind of uh, lessen the diversity and disparity and promote equity uh, because you're treating all people as humans yeah. and your approach to them is um, consistent uh, no matter who they are, where they are, yeah. and that you're bringing forth a perspective about the human being and condition, the yeah. nature of person, yeah. and a discovery. You know, who are you and what's important and what's meaningful? Everybody has those components that are yeah. critical to their life. And, and that discussion about, you know, well-becoming is really about all humans growing. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and that may be part of, of the solution that that is uh, being thought about here as well. Um, how do you get to the patient experience, mm -hmm. all patients, all people, 
in communities, et cetera, and treat them as humans. As humans. And un try to understand not only their illness, but the context of that oh, illness oh. in terms of the disparities you spoke about in that kind of way. Yeah, and that's um, the very important roles that nurses play in healthcare in, in, in helping the clients become aware, helping the, the patient become aware of those experiences and um, the impacts of those experiences, those human experiences. How does it relate to that person's health? Thank you, Dorothy, for that beautiful contribution. Yes, there. Well, there's some feedback online. The first thing says, wonderful job, Uka, Stella, and Dottie. This is such a great work being done to standardize nursing language and to bring people together to make patient outcomes better for all patients in all countries. And the question is, how widespread is the use of standardized language and clinical practice today in the world? Um, yeah, I I'd like to start to answer that question by saying that in Nigeria, for instance, the standardized nursing language, um, st we, uh, the concept of standardized nursing language was brought to Nigeria in 2010. That's about 12 years ago. And um, over the time, the country has um, started to, uh, the, the, the country has started to, be, to use the standardized nursing language. Though the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, which is um, the professional body for nurses, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, that professional regulation, the regulation body rather, for nurses in the country, um, is adding, uh, is inculcating the standardized nursing languages into the um, curriculum for nursing education right now. And uh, in most universities, standardized nursing languages are being taught, though not um, at the undergraduate levels, but it's sometimes in some curriculum it is mentioned, it is introduced at the undergraduate levels, but it is taught in depth in, at, the, uh, at the graduate levels. So many countries are beginning to, to um, appreciate the use of um, standardized nursing languages because it makes nurses work visible. You, it's documenting. It, it helps us in documenting the things that we do, the patient's needs, the patient's, um, the patient's um, care or human experiences, the patient's experiences and what nurses do to help this patient understand these experiences, which is the role of, of um, Nothing. I don't know if um, yeah. Luca has any. Um, yeah, in, in my experience, uh, um, this is one of the challenges that is brought also here. Uh, so a lot of times, uh, uh, nurses, because this biomedical approach is present in a lot of facilities, uh, the documentation is a really, really biomedical center. So there is a lot of data that are missing. So this is one of the challenges. <clears throat> but where where um, nursing uh, standard nursing languages is used. The approach is different, is more personalized. You can give to the patient uh, something more. And uh, actually the nursing diagnosis uh, can explain a lot of uh, um, more. So actually the nursing diagnosis can, um, can be a predictor of a, a length of stay. So how much you can stay in the, in the hospital or can be, um, can be a predictor of, um, of um, mortality. So there is a lot of uh, studies that are showing this, uh, this uh, relation between uh, uh, using these terminologies and better patient outcomes. So the, is, there is, is evidence based. And uh, inside these terminologies, there is uh, evidence based too, because uh, it's, uh, mm, it are revised every two years, for example, in international. So all these um, problems, outcomes, intervention are revised, so our quality of care. So if you use them, of course, you will do the things in, in a manner. If you don't do that, you're not. You are just following, not, not following the, the COVID uh, gu guidelines. So um, uh, in Italy, for example, in, in some, I had the opportunity to, to experience the organization um, in, in Modena where they was using this approach. 
and I saw a difference. The, the nurses was, uh, was enthusiastic about this new approach. They was uh, um, not just uh, using in the work, in, the, in doing the work, doing the moment of the work, but they was uh, doing events outside. They, do, they was uh, connecting nursing with art. So it was a transformational approach. So if you can do in one part, you, can, you should do also in the others. Because if it's working, uh, if, if, if uh, it's proved that it can give uh, good outcomes, and if it's standardized so you can share data around the world, why don't you use it? So um, I think we need to, to the problem that uh, also address the question about uh, the identity and the, um, the image of nurses, it's, uh, it's just this. We don't have a representation in also in the, um, in the policy. Um, in Italy, they, there was one politician, nurse politician, just one. Now I think there is no. But uh, there is 29 million, <laughs> there is a, a larger portion of, uh, of healthcare are nurses. So should be equally distributed also in the parliament, should be a portion of nurses that can make laws also for, for nurses. But the proportion is, uh, is inverted. So there are much more uh, doctors, uh, physicians there, and less uh, nurses. So why? There is, this, this is a great uh, injustice and inequality. So we need to address this, this problem before. Because if we, if we have a system that is different, it's, different, it's difficult from, from the base uh, to change. I mean, it's possible, but it's very, very, very difficult. Um, so th this is my, my thought. But if you want to add something. And um, in adopt, uh, so the, the question is um, people using the, S the standardized nursing languages. Yes, people are using the standardized nursing languages. Um, adoption of a new, uh, a new innovation is always a gradual process. In my country, where it just came about 10, 12 years ago, some clinical areas are beginning to use it. In my, in my PhD thesis, um, uh, we developed a standardized nursing care plan using the standardized nursing languages. And um, this was used by clinic, nurse clinicians. Okay? And um, th th that study revealed that there was improvement in nursing, the, the quantity of nursing interventions that nurses provided and the improvement in nursing documentation. And like I said before, the National Midwifery Council is um, adding it up to, to the, nursing, the nursing education curriculum. So people are using it and adoption is increasing um, every, every day and in most places too. And that is why um, one of my professors would say, preach the gospel of SNL. That is what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Just a comment that I think that's why it's so, this program is so important for people to experience health systems and co different cultures, mm -hmm. so that when they go back, they can adapt that in an implementation way that is tailored to their particular health system, yeah. health policies. And so I really applaud your motivation to build capacity in your respective countries. I think that's a great outcome from this program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that, that seems like a fitting place to close because uh, this series is basically to try to say that this community here at Boston College is made up of over 2,200 uh, international participants. And part of it is learning to communicate with one another. We communicate through language, and the structures of language really enable a globality in which there's hospitality, there's engagement, and there's progress. Um, so that in the middle of this season of, of, um, of these international uh, scholar lectures, uh, to be discussing language, professional language, a language that's emerging so that bridge building can happen more is all the more uh, for us. So thank you for this presentation. We'll be on the lookout for instances of uh, this standardized uh, nursing language. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.